As a retina specialist, the challenges I address with my micropulse laser, with the, my Iridex IQ 577, are uh, CSR, RVO, DME, and actually I'm just incorporating it in wet AMDS for now. Reliance on, in pharmacotherapy or reduction in pharmacotherapy treatment has changed a lot in my practice since I started Micropulse. Micropulse just reduced significantly the amount of injections I've been using in patients. Most of the patients in RVOs, I've come to the conclusion that if I use a mixed therapy, Micropulse and IVTs, I usually reduce three to four injections a year per, pa per patient. When you ha have to address a patient that's kind of nervous and you have to explain how are you going or what are you going to do to them, the way I usually explain Micropulse, we do have a new technology, a unique technology here in Colombia that's a, a laser that fragments all the pulses preventing heat and not damaging the retina. So we are going to have the same effect as a conventional, as the old laser, with no side effects. That's usually the, the way that a patient just eases when you talk about laser. I think everyone with a DME, an RVO, or a CSR, it's an ideal candidate. When, when I have a, a DME that's four, 450 microns, usually don't start with micropulse because I believe that I'm not gonna find the ideal uh, result. So I usually start with another thing and when I come to the place where I believe that micropulse is gonna work 100%, I go with micropulse and I forget about IVTs. But in cases of CSR, acute CSR uh, resolved way more quicker than waiting. And patients with RVO, the same as DMEs, have the same macular thickness disadvantage. So I think the, the patients with too much of an edema are not gonna be the ideal to start with, but uh, they are still gonna get good results with it. Teaching residents, it's a challenge. My micropulse laser was the first one in Colombia and I am the, let's say the one that uses it the most in macular therapy. It's been like the, the one thing that has them hooked and I, always believe that when you're teaching someone and you don't bring new stuff to them, they are going to stay behind. If your resident accidentally shoots the fovea, that's done. There's nothing more to do. But when you have a micropulse, you sit down your resident for the first time and you say, okay, you want to be a retina specialist. Yeah, I want to be a retina specialist. You like micropulse. Yeah, I love micropulse. Okay, sit down, take the lens. And he usually just make, um, doctor, do, can I go through the same area again? I mean, I, the patient moved, I'm not sure. Go again, don't worry. It's my purpose, Nothing, nothing's gonna go wrong. And that gives you peace when you're working with residents. The thing that you cannot get with a continuous wave laser if he's doing macular treatment. I incorporated micropulse in as many ways as I can. Sometimes it's in adjunct therapy for IVTs, or maybe you should start with your laser, as I do in many cases, and after you are almost there, if you want to go faster, you just go with an IVT and a retreatment, and you can mix and match. But if I have in front of me someone that's never used the laser, and even though he's never tried it, he's still skeptical, I just took my phone and I have all my presentations on my cases there, so I just show them a bit of my results. One image is worth more than a thousand words. So if I show them a tangible result, he's gonna kind of change the fact that, okay, I might try it. It's the one thing I think I can do. Aside the use of micropoles in macula, everything you do in peripheral retina is just destroying retina. And maybe we can get uh, to a place where we can do a pan photocoagulation without the scarring, without the visual field loss, without the quality of vision loss. Maybe that's the, the future. Maybe that's where we need to go. If you want to describe micropoles in three words, safe, effective, and unique.